Do you want to be able to handle life with wisdom, with grace, with understanding, with compassion, with having a sense of connectedness with everything, including the universe, understanding your place within it, and going through life in such a way? If your answer is yes, then you should develop your spiritual intelligence. Because this is exactly what will happen if you're spiritually intelligent or if you develop that. Because there are aspects to spiritual intelligence that will foster that, that will grow that within you. And so I'm going to focus on these aspects in this video. I'm going to divide it into three main aspects for now so that you get get a sense of what is spiritual intelligence and knowing now that these are the benefits which we will look at again later on um, seeing the value in develop, developing your spiritual intelligence. Now as you are on the spiritual path anyway, on the path of self-exploration, the first main aspect of spiritual intelligence won't come as a surprise to you. And it is what's called in the law of one, know yourself, know thyself, which means self-awareness. Spiritually intelligent people, humans, are very, very aware of themselves. What does that mean? They're aware of their belief systems, they're aware of their thought patterns, they're aware of their motives, they're aware of their values, they are aware of their maybe even hidden ego patterns or programmings from early life, they become increasingly aware of themselves. And this self-awareness helps them then to slowly shed and take off one leaf after another or one layer after another of their ego structure, their false or illusionary created self to reveal and uncover the true self. So by following the path of self-awareness and self-exploration every day, in every second, meaning living life always with one observational eye, with one eye observing yourself or observing whatever is going on within you from a neutral or higher perspective. That is what is required if we actually want to uncover what is not true, what is not real, what is limiting, what is blocking and what is kind of in the way of our true self being able to unfold and to expand. So that's the first key aspect of spiritual intelligence. So if you're wondering if somebody is spiritually intelligent, like they could have, I don't know, video channels and talk about spiritual topics, but if you actually want to see if somebody is spiritually intelligent, you can do that by observing how much they observe themselves. And that's not kind of in, a, in an insecure way that the ego can produce as well, that you have a thought pattern that constantly analyzes and thinks about what are you trying to say next, how is the other person going to respond and so on. That's again an ego mechanism a construct mechanism of your identity. That's not the true self with its wisdom accompanying you or you as the true self with your wisdom accompanying the human self. So, but you can actually see spiritually intelligent people will be relentless in their self-investigation. They will be curious to find out what's inside of them not scared, not afraid, or if they are, they will trace that. They will go to the source. They will go to, how come I'm afraid of looking at that pattern? I see that's there. I don't actually want to look at it. What is it? And they will not give up. They will stay persistent because only if we're brave enough to look at ourselves, 
to investigate, to fully know ourselves. And that means all the illusionary layers are the the 3D construction layers plus our true nature, our true self. That is what is meant by know thyself. It's not just know thyself, know everything that you have constructed and all your, your ego labels, um, all your attributes that you have given to yourself that may or may not be so. But it also means holding this image of yourself, if you want to see it that way, but also seeing yourself as the perfect, holy individualization of the divine and having both of them simultaneously, simultaneously on the same step, um, on the same platform and looking at the two at the same time. That's also a quality of non-duality. Seeing all your limitations, all your attributes and at the same time seeing that there is no attribute, that there is no limitation to who you really are. So this is what is meant by self-exploration and self-awareness. And in the progression of the development of spiritual intelligence, this is what is kind of always in the heading. Self-exploration. Know thyself. Know thyself. Get to know yourself. And that also means, though, that leads me to the second part, which is compassion and understanding. And this is also tied in with what's called in the law of one, accept yourself. What does that mean? It means then that you accept the, the you that you see as limited in all its limitations. You accept every pattern that is there that you uncover before you actually try to change anything about it. You accept that it's there and you honor it. There is nothing wrong with it, even though it might be a negative pattern, it might be a negative belief that you have, it might be limiting, it might be putting you down or criticizing others. That might be so. But before we can actually deal with it, we need to accept it. We need to have compassion with ourselves. And this compassion with ourselves then floats out, flows out into the collective and into our relationships with others and into our relationships with, with earth, with life itself. Because if we're compassionate, we have compassion with those around us. We have compassion with life situations and with life challenges. And we produce an understanding of life challenges. This gets us out of victimhood because when we do the self-awareness part, we know exactly when we choose the victim mode. We can't hide that before us anymore if you're spiritually intelligent. You don't, you can't. But you can still choose to live out that pattern. You can still choose to do that. That's very interesting as well. So it doesn't mean that you always behave in the perfect way. You might choose to behave completely immaturely or non-intelligently from a spiritual standpoint in order to have a certain experience or in order to express a certain facet of you, let's say a 3D facet that wants to express anger right now. You can still do that and there's nothing wrong with it. Now, as our spiritual intelligence develops, you will find lesser and lesser need to express yourself in such a way because the wisdom will come up as a result of spiritual intelligence and wisdom will see that it's actually a lot more beneficial to not express in that way and find more loving, kind, compassionate and fulfilling ways of exp expressing yourself in any given situation. So that's the second bit. The second bit actually allows us to feel compassion for ourselves and for the world around us and for life and develop an understanding for everything. And that way we also start to see everything that happens, even the challenges or maybe especially the challenges if we choose to look at it this way, like that can be one of your main areas to work on. How can I see challenges as lessons? How can I see challenges as gifts? That can be something that you can take now 
and say, I'm going to go through my day with this task. That's my main task for today, for tomorrow, for the next three months, maybe for the next three years. How can I see particularly challenges and pain and limitations as lessons, as my opportunity to grow, as my opportunity to move forward and develop my spiritual intelligence? If we look at life from this standpoint, everything is being accepted because everything is seen as a lesson, as having value for us, as being for us, not against us. So everything, all of a sudden, will become empowering. And that's what we can see with spiritually intelligent people. They will not be disempowered by anything. They will not be disempowered by limitations or by something going wrong or some failure happening because that's not how they see it. They see the failure as a challenge to rise to a new level. They see a failure as a lesson. How do I deal with, I don't know, the loss of my job? Or like, how do I deal with the loss of my business or my relationship? Not as my relationship has failed, my boss has sacked me because I'm no good, um, so I failed in my job or I failed in my business or I failed in my relationship. No, it's more like, okay, I have some responsibility in this. I'm experiencing it because somehow I co-created it. What's the lesson? What is the lesson? What am I, am I being given here that can help me grow, move forward, expand because this life really guys i want to say this actually i want to say this every time i'm making videos this life is so short it's such a short opportunity to be who you really are and to work on yourself and to develop and grow and yes in the end we don't have to do anything because the starting point and the end point of our divinity is the same and so it is really a circle and we're just what we call growth or development is actually always in the now and is always perfect already anyway but we are walking through this illusionary progression so let's use this use your incarnation now to work on yourself to be better what does it mean not better than someone else better than the version of you that you were yesterday and what does that mean? That means be truer yourself. Be a lot more your true self than you were yesterday. What does the, that mean, the true self? It means your holy self. The true beingness, the essence within you that is untouched by anything you do or say, by anything that you think about yourself or other people think about you, that cannot be limited or defined or enclosed. It's the real, the true you, which is, if you want to put a label on it, unconditional love, because that's what's in every creation. That is the substance of every creation, because only unconditional love can create. Again, that's what has been said in the Law of One. It's this intelligent energy, which is called love, that creates everything, and that is you. So the creator and the creation share this one essence. And that leads me then to the third aspect, which is the transcendence, um, the understanding or the, the ability to transcend yourself and your limited thought pattern, your limited beingness, and connect to the larger connect to the higher that is the third major aspect of spiritual intelligence this means you will find a connection to everything to the universe you will find and explore your place in the universe your connection to the universe what is this how come there is a connection and by universe i don't mean space i mean everything the seen and the unseen I mean all dimensions. I mean the spirit world as well as the physical world. So 
spiritually intelligent people live in a very transcendent, transcended way in terms of looking at life from a perspective that is higher, that transcends the, their own programming, their own limited sense of self and their own beliefs. And spiritually intelligent people can, with that wisdom that comes with it, can see from multiple perspectives, like they understand why person X thinks that and Y that and Z that. And they may have their own preferences or view or perspective on the situation, but they understand each perspective precisely perfectly without having to judge or reject any of them. Because they transcend their own, but this should be this way. Why can you not see this? Like, it's very clear, you should be thinking the way I think. Or if you were <laughs> as developed as me, you would see it is exactly the way I do. That is not spiritually intelligent. That's more like spiritual ego talking. But this is exactly what happens once you open yourself up to the connection to the more. Like, you develop a sense of purpose. You develop, first of all, a seeking of meaning. You are no longer prepared to go through life, go through the motions, wake up in the morning, go to work, come back home, try to relax somehow, whether it is through sport or TV or whatever you do, go to bed and restart your day the same way. You are going to search for meaning. That's part of spiritual intelligence. You're going to search for meaning and the result then is that search will lead you into a deeper state of aliveness, into a deeper connectedness with life itself because it wants to be explored, it wants to be understood. It wants to, to share its connection with you because it's the same life force that is in life itself and in you. It's the same. You are the same. We are life itself being expressed in this body, being expressed in this moment in time. That's what we are. We are life. So spiritual intelligence includes the exploration of life from a transcendental standpoint. The meaning of life, the purpose of life. Also spiritually intelligent people will look always at, once I look for the purpose, I look for what's the service, how can I serve? How can I serve? It does not mean that all of them have to have jobs in a social area, as in a nurse or, or a social worker or a care worker or caretaker. Or, that's not what it's meant. It's more like whatever you're good at, because the self-awareness and self-exploration will also reveal to you what you're good at, what your talents are, what you brought here to actually express and to that's been, that you use it for the benefit of humanity, for the benefit of others, so that they benefit from your talents, from your gifts, from your positive aspects. So you will then look at how can I use them to serve others. That's part of spiritual intelligence. It's not part of intelligence. And it's not even part of emotional intelligence. The compassion bit even more so in the understanding and the empathy, like that falls into that. But looking for the deeper meaning or expanding into greater meaning and transcending, that is spiritual intelligence. Seeing yourself in the greater scheme of things, beyond the boundaries of this incarnation, the before and the after and above and below, and the through it all and the around, that's part of spiritual intelligence. So then if we take all of these and look again at the benefits. If we explore these, if we develop these, what happens is life for us will change completely because you will change. The more spiritually intelligent you become, the more you change. And the more life becomes almost like you're painting and you're the painter, which in a way, it's a very good analogy. It becomes your canvas. It becomes your way of expressing your own beingness. 
more and more and more truly, fully, wholly. And so then you live life with wisdom and grace and love and compassion and empathy and understanding and joy and meaning and depth and connection and purpose. And this is what we all want, isn't it? So I hope that this was helpful. Write in the comments what you think about this. I'm going to love you and leave you for today. And we'll talk again next time, if you want to.